Beatrix Ferrand had a unique set of skills, interdisciplinary skills, landscape architecture or gardening, as she would call it, architecture, engineering, and really ecology. I mean, some of the latest research on Beatrix and her workings on many of the different projects is in ecology, her ability to harness stormwater and with an aesthetic approach to be able to do that. And so she really was a dynamo because of the, that combination of skills. She also built her education herself and built her highly successful career on, on her own. What's unique about Dumbarton Oaks and Dumbarton Oaks Park and how this fits within Beatrix Farron's career and extant legacy and I think that begins with the synergy between Ferrand and Bliss in design intent, collaboration, and exploration over time. But what's expressly unique and that I've been thinking about recently is that while well, one portion, the formal garden, has been cherished and nurtured over time through deep, deep academic and boots on the ground dedication, the wild garden portion, now public park, over time has been deeply neglected in terms of even the most minimal resource management to maintain and preserve it for what it is. And yet, the remnants convey and the work that Ferrand put in to weave the design into the steep and sweeping topography is still accessible to us and evocative. And it's remarkable that this master work, now two parcels of land under separate management, was given this lasting infrastructure by Ferrand for us to work with. Beatrix Farron's design in Dumbarton Oaks Park really is a call to many people's childhood experiences. I think the topography and the dramatic topographic change has a lot to do with that perception that it was just there because it's part of a stream valley that continues into Rock Creek Park. And so the, the definitions of its borders and boundaries is vague as of now. So I think that's one reason. Um, but yes, I think there are a lot of people that many people know of the formal gardens, but they know nothing of the wild garden below. And it is notable that it exists, that the whole thing exists, even if people don't know that the wild garden was part of an integral part of the design, the boundaries of that whole property still remain. And the first project, restoration project that we undertook was called the Signature Project which was a restoration of the American beach grove. It's the entry or the atrium, if you will, to this park, the official entry point at the gates at the bottom of Lover's Lane. And I like to call it the big reveal because it was editing. It was pulling those vines down. It, we removed hundreds of trees. And all of these visitors that have been coming to the park for decades had no idea that there was a woodland beyond, that there was a reason to walk in beyond the bridge. And they started to venture in a little bit more, a little bit more, and they started to understand that there was a design. And they started to understand why you would take trees down to then replant trees that were native and that were sustainable. If we were walking in the park with Beatrix Ferrand, which um, is, a, is a question posed on a regular basis, and actually we, we do consider her present in all discussions, design discussions, um, restoration discussions. I mean, it's really a principal part of our master planning process in its first iteration. What would Beatrix think? And looking at everything she's provided us with. Another piece is, you know, as these ideas come into place, whether it's uh, planting replacements that are evocative of her initial choices or colors or scents or shapes, we have a saying in the Conservancy that Beatrix and Mildred are smiling down upon us. The work of Dumbarton Oaks Park Conservancy, the mission is to restore, promote, and maintain Dumbarton Oaks Park now and for generations to come. And the work that we do is rooted in partnerships and community with boots on the ground experiences for volunteers, 80,000 hours to date from far and wide, Educational opportunities are in step with where we're at in restoration and conservation processes through our Leave No Child Inside programming and annual adult lecture and practicum series. And we invite you in to restore this American treasure by joining us in the philanthropic tradition of giving 
in 2021, 10 years for the Conservancy, um, 80 years since the park was gifted to the people of the United States and a century since the design work began.